Remote Classes in Zoom, Part 3, Creating a Remote Synchronous Lesson with Activities. Hello, my name is Elan Pelson, and I'm a teaching and learning consultant at Conestoga College. This is the third video of a four-part video series featuring information and ideas about classes in Zoom. The focus of this video provides an overview with examples of how to create remote lessons with activities that incorporate different Zoom features. Please see the links list that accompanies this video series. To begin, I invite you to pause this video for two minutes for a brief reflection. Using an electronic document or a piece of paper, answer the following questions. What knowledge, skills, and attitudes do I want students to learn in my course? What is the lesson plan and course content that I wish to deliver? What is my desired level of engagement and what Zoom features are best to use? How can a lesson structure best support learning for my remote classes? Before sharing some ideas for creating a remote synchronous lesson out of lesson content, I'd like to share with you a chart adapted from Clark and Mayer's 2015 publication, E-Learning and the Science of Instruction. Based on years of research, the author suggests that different types of activities and their engagement levels depend on the goals of the lesson. This chart shows three different learning architectures with different levels of learner engagement. For instance, a receptive learning architecture, where the focus is information acquisition and the goal is basic orientation training, low behavioral engagement levels may be appropriate. If the focus is on strengthening abilities and the goal is to train on procedures, the directive architecture may necessitate a medium level of engagement. Finally, for focus on knowledge construction for developing strategic abilities, the best architecture is guided discovery, which requires a high level of learner engagement. Once faculty have determined which of the architectures is the best fit for their course learning outcomes, they may then select Zoom activities that provide the appropriate level of learner engagement. Some Zoom features, such as screen share, showing hands, or pressing a quick response button, require only a low level of behavioral engagement. For medium levels of engagement, learners may use the chat or the microphone to make responses to videos or podcasts, or respond to questions using the annotate or whiteboard features. Finally, for high levels of behavior engagement, uh, they may be accomplished by using uh, various tools for quizzing or discussion and collaborative document completion in breakout rooms. The main takeaway is that faculty should ask themselves, what is the engagement level that is needed and what Zoom features can I use to generate that level of engagement? Sometimes it'll only be one level and other times it may be a combination of levels. I'll now share a few brief examples where static content is reimagined as engagement activity using different Zoom features. This slide uh, from a face-to-face -face presentation slide deck asks how many Canadians suffer from foodborne illnesses each year. It's already in a poll uh, question format, so it may be adapted easily to a Zoom poll. The behavioral engagement level here remains low. This slide describes some terminology, the definitions of foodborne illnesses and what happens when food is contaminated. I invite you to pause the video and imagine what Zoom feature or activity you would use to make the activity more engaging. This slide shows the same descriptive content, but is presented now as a fill in the blank question. As a brief whiteboard activity, Students may now choose the best answers to finish the question. Faculty may ask them to provide in the group chat the matches that they think are best, and then faculty may move the correct responses to each question. With this simple change, the behavioral engagement level increases from receptive to directive. Here is an example to which a personal question and an image has been added to the slide information. 
By adding a simple image and asking a question about the image, the slide asks students to access their prior knowledge and experiences, then build on what they already know when introducing new information. This slide provides content about common food allergies and uh, to food and to foods and additives. The behavioral engagement level can be increased with simple instructions for students to use the annotate tool to place a star next to the food or additive they know someone is allergic to. For example, I know someone who is allergic to eggs, nuts, and seafood. This strategy personalizes the slide content, relating it directly to something or someone students already know. To enhance the engagement level even further for this slide, students may search for more information on allergens and share what they learn with each other. The instructions for this activity on the slide may have students open the web page before you shop on their devices. Then in breakout groups, students review the information from one food allergy fact sheet. They discuss what they found in small groups. Then, as a group, they bring back one fun fact to share with the whole class. Faculty could even be asked, uh, ask students to look in their food cupboards and find an item that has a common allergen in it. This slide provides some course content for tips on preventing chemical hazards. I invite you to pause this presentation for two minutes and reflect. What Zoom feature and learning activity would you use to increase the behavioral engagement level of learners from receptive to directive, perhaps with a video or podcast, or even guided discovery? Individual activities using Zoom features should be organized in a larger lesson plan structure. One way to structure a remote synchronous lesson is using the BOPS model. BOPS is an acronym representing bridge in, the beginning or teaser, Outcomes, the learning goals or objectives. Pre-assessment, determining what students know or review. Participatory learning, structured and unstructured active learning and practice. Post-assessment, performance of learning. And summary, ending that reinforces the learning. The table on my slide shows different Zoom features and activities for each part of the BOPS lesson plan. For bridge, ask a yes or no question on foodborne illnesses. For outcomes, share a screen that lists the learning goals, uh, as well as the definition, the risks, the symptoms, and the causes of foodborne illness. For pre-assessment, conduct a brainstorming activity on the reasons people get sick from food. For participatory learning, show slides with annotate responses, and then show a video with a question and answer on the symptoms, hazards, and types of allergens. For the post-assessment, present a poll quiz on how many people get sick per year, the most common hazards, and the most common symptoms. Then for a summary, share a file or use an exit ticket, one way that students have learned to prevent foodborne illness. There are many different types of Zoom features that can be used to create dynamic, engaging learning activities for remote synchronous lessons using the BOPS model. I invite you now to pause this video and answer uh, these reflection questions. First, what lesson structure, receptive, directed, or guided discovery will help achieve the learning outcomes? You may need to review match the learning outcomes and goals with the required level of behavioral engagement in order to determine what kinds of Zoom activities you will need to develop for the lesson content. Second, do a Google search to find the video creating a lesson plan or find the video link on the links list. Um, this video has been created by the teaching and learning team and it will give you some more information on the BOPS lesson plan. As you watch the video, reflect on these questions. What student-centered activities will support learning for the course content? What time frame and course resources do I have? And how can I use the BOPS model to structure my remote synchronous at lesson activities? Thank you for viewing this video and answering the reflection questions. For more information on active learning, the BOPS model, lesson plan, feedback and assessments, and student engagement while teaching at Conestoga, visit the Faculty Learning Hub, tlconestoga.ca. The next video in this series provides ideas and reminders for before class planning using Zoom.